Hey everyone, welcome back. It's me, Sit Sing. It is what, how is 2023 right now? Yeah. How are you all doing? Uh, just wondering. What's up? Um, yeah, so we're going to be using some leak code now. And you may be wondering, what is leak code? Just jumping right into the video, I guess, because we got a, quite, a bit of, quite a bit to get through. And I'm going to kind of explain how all this is going to work out. All right. Uh, just give me a second. Okay, perfect. All right, we're good to go. All right. So basically, um, if you've done Python, Java, any sort of coding, or what kind of coding language did you all like? Let me know down in the comments down below. Um, and I would love to know that. Um, but once you've done like coding back code step by step, whatever, uh, Code Academy is also there, a great resource, Coursera, Udemy, whatever, YouTube, of course. Please, please uh, like, subscribe. Nah, I'm just kidding. Um, but besides that, um, Lead code is basically where you can do easy, medium, even harder problems to prepare for coding technical interviews, which comes in handy quite a bit. Um, and we're going to do an easy problem, so don't worry, don't freak out, and I'll show you my solution to it. I may, I might make a few mistakes along the way, barely any, because I'm kind of good at this kind of stuff. Um, or at least kind of know a little bit of logic around this. Yeah, it's not a hard problem I'm doing. I'm not, I'm no Bill Gates or anything, okay? Um, but. Uh, I do have a couple of ideas. Like I feel like we all have some sort of ideas how to do them, but I think one big problem is like we just don't know how to implement them. And I, I kind of spend some time uh, thinking about other problems. And what I do is I think about a problem. I keep thinking about the logic. Why? What am I doing wrong? I barely ask hints. Now there's ChatGPT, which can literally write code, which is just amazing. But at the same time, like we're supposed to do the coding, and the AI is supposed to assist us with it. Like, not the other way around, you know. It's a great tool to use. Oh, don't get me wrong. I use it a lot, you know. But I try to refrain from using it when I'm like, okay. But if I get this recording problem, I'm not going to have chat GPT with me. So from that point of view, I need to know how to do it. Um, but I use chat GPT a lot. It's a great resource for them. Like, why isn't this one running? It helps me with some test cases. Like, it, uh, it helps me a lot, quite a bit. Um, so, yeah. And I think in leak code... You can even come up with your own test cases to help other people out, which is just great. But obviously, your test code has to be correct. I'm pretty sure you can't just make a false test case that doesn't even work. You know, I think they're going to test your test case. Maybe. I'm not sure. Imagine someone just gave you just a coding project, coding problem, just to write a test case, make make a really good test, hard test case. The harder it is, the more points you get. That would be a fun, fun activity, actually, to do. But I guess your teacher had to be the judge of that, or professor, or whatever. That would be interesting, though. Uh, why do I like lead code? I like lead code because the problems you can get, the range of the difficulty the problems you can get, I believe it's lead code daily, I think. Um, but, yeah. It is fully uh, customizable. Um, you can just customize it. You can change your font, your background, whatever you want to do. You can do all of that. Um, spacing, indents, whatever. So that's really cool too. And you can kind of choose your pace and kind of choose what you want to do. So I think, I think it's time to do this. All right, let's go do it. We're doing the two sum problem. The two sum problem is one of the easiest. Maybe the first problem I do in the code. So you're gonna be fine. Chill, relax. It's an easy problem. It's one of the easiest problems on the code. And the code can get very, very hard. Just with the range of problems. Um, but once you figure this one out, then I think I'll maybe do a couple more, maybe make a series out of this. It'd just be awesome because I think now I'm ready to kind of get back onto this. Kind of with the school year starting again, that's that's when I have more time to do my videos. I can't really make videos during the summer. I mean, I can, but like, that's when like y'all are just kind of just trying to do your own thing. You know, y'all are trying to relax. I'm trying to relax. It's kind of our time to relax. Even though technically summer is actually the times that I'm free the most. Um, yeah. But anyway, let's do some leak code. Yes. Let's do this. Do some problem. I think I can link, link it down in the description below. Because I tried to search for it, but I couldn't find it. But whatever. It's fine. Alright. Ooh. Okay. Let's do this. I'll turn my screen capture on because I need that. I was just using the webcam right now. All right, lead code, lead code, lead code. There. 
we go. There's the code. There's our two some problem. I'll kind of minimize myself here. Alright, cool. And I think the font, everything looks good. So we're good to go from that end. Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Alright, two some problem. Uh, you can even change your coding language. You got C++, Java, Python, Python 3, C Sharp, all this stuff right over there. I'm using Java. It's what I'm most comfortable with. You could do Python, C Sharp, whatever you want. Go ahead and do it. But I mostly, but I mostly do Python, Java, maybe HTML, CSS, web. But for this, for me, Java, I kind of got it. So if you're using Java, then you can kind of see my solution to it, because then you, you you'll kind of understand. Like you'll get the class, and then like all the code, like the template code, will be in Java format already for us, you know. And I like to, I like kind of Java's formatting a little bit, but I do dabble in Python, kind of. So yeah. Those are my really go-to languages for this. I'm using Java. Anything else I want to say before we dive into this? Uh, I think I had all the. I think I've got all the main points I want to hit. So let's go ahead and do this. Alright, two some. Yes, it is an easy problem. Fifty point eight thousand people liked it. One point six thousand didn't. I don't know why. Um, you can look at hints if you need one. Refrain from that, please. Uh, we're gonna try to do this on our own in more actions. Only is hint if you're doing a hard problem, or you can't think of it. And the hint's not really going to solve it for you anyway. So, you know. And the hint might not even be as good. I didn't even look at the hint for this problem. Because I didn't need it. Um, let's see. Given array of integer nums and their target, return it into the two numbers so that are target. Mention that each input has exactly one solution. There's only one solution. And you might use the same element twice. Okay. You can use the same element twice. I forgot about that. Alright then. Uh, example 1. Okay, so in this case, you have 2, 7, and 15, and your target's 9, so if you do 0, 1, it's because 0 and 1, 2 plus 7 equals 9. Okay, that makes sense. And the second one, you have 3, 2, and 4, so I'm assuming 1 and 2, because the 2 plus 4 will give you the 6. Yeah, that's what I thought. And the third one, you have 3 and 3. I guess the only one that'll work is 0, 1, or 1, 0. I guess the first order also works. But you can't do 0, 0, or 1, 1, because it says right here, you may not use the same element twice. Right, they might have had a bunch more allowable test cases. Uh, just a couple constraints, and then time complexity, because we don't have to worry about that right now. Alright, let's go ahead and do this. Yay. How do y'all feel, y'all? If you haven't done the code before, or just having fun with this, I'm going to enjoy this. Alright, so let's go ahead and do this. Alright, the first thing I want to do is I want to make a, an integer array. So I'll make an integer array. Kind of like this. Oh, wait, let me actually kind of explain what's going on first. I'm just diving in right now, but I kind of, I think I kind of should help you a little bit more. Alright, so first we're making a class solution. You could say public, but it doesn't really matter. Um, because they're going to run the code for us anyway, and probably some like uh, class which has a main method, maybe like a main.java file. Um, and then we have this public, which means anyone can access it. It needs to be public, because they're probably going to access this method outside of this solution class. Um, and then we have an integer array. The square bracket means array. Uh, the method is called twosome. And then our two parameters that are inside, one we have or again, what I call them parameters. We have an integer array called nums, and then another integer called target, which we saw earlier. All right, now let me explain what's going on. So first I'm gonna make an integer array. I'll call it ants for answer, I guess. You can call it whatever you want. But this is how I would do it. And I would say that I would give it a size of two, because we're turning an integer array. So let's go ahead and declare um, and make um, our integer array instantiated. All right. So why did I do this? Well, first, obviously, the integer array is what we need to make. I call it ants. Call it whatever you want. And then equals new int. You have to do that. And then I gave it a size of 2. And the semicolon, obviously, you know, semicolon at the end of every line. Code, job. Um, but, yeah. And it's, they're all in size of 2, right? All of our outputs are all in size of 2. Because you're going to have two numbers. Um, you're going to have two indexes, indices, whatever. Uh, in your answer for your integer array. So that's why it has a size of two. Right now they're predefined to zero. Uh, if you were to do two steps, you could first just declare the array and then give it the size of the next one and it'll have that many zeros. But not, why, don't, why don't I just use less code and do it all in one step, you know? Just just makes it a lot easier, right? Okay. Um, next thing. Well, let's make a for loop. Um, this for loop is going to basically, we can say it's i, I guess, and it's going to start from the beginning. Getting to the end of our nums array and just loop through that. 
So it could be like four int i, and this could be one of our first index numbers. Where int i equals zero. Um, while i is less than, I do less than nums dot length, not dot size because it's not an array list. Nums dot length, and because it's an array and the length, length is how we get the size of our array. It's a property, not a method, so we don't need parentheses. And then i plus plus. All right, cool. There we go. And then I guess we could do the same thing for, I guess, j. I'm going to try j equals 0. Change those the numbers out of line. Why don't we just do the same thing? Right now, we just do for j, j plus plus. All right, and then why don't we try this? Why don't we make an if condition right here? If nums at index i plus nums at index j equals our target value if it equals our target value here why don't i actually move this over a little bit so we can kind of read it better okay if it equals our target value um then, then i guess we're good to go right we found our successful ones then we can just add it so we get to the ants at index zero or it doesn't matter equals i and i'll say ants at index one ah at index one Boom. And I guess now we can just return our array, right? Yeah. We're good to go. Okay. That's our if condition. And if the if doesn't work, then we'll just loop through the for loop. Um, yeah, close that if, close that for loop, close this for loop. This is within the method, this is within the class. So I think it'll have to be right around here. We can return our array ants. So what did we do? Uh, we made our array. Um, then we made a for loop from zero to the end of the nums array, and then we did the same thing for j. And then if the sum of it equals target, then we just set it to it um, in our ants array. And we just return that that integer array. Make sure 32 bits, as you all know. All right, let's go ahead and run. I won't submit yet. Let's just run. All right, running. Okay, so case one passed. Two seven eleven nine one zero 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 one. Okay. Um, case two passed. Three two four. Yeah. Is three, we did three and three target was six, but instead of one more, or instead of zero one, we got one more. And I guess it should be one one. Um, yeah. Because, I mean, three three could work, but like, or not three three, one one could work maybe, but then we're using the same element again, even though three plus three is six, it has to be different. So th um, our expected two values have to be separate for this one. It could be one zero or it could be zero one or one zero, not one one or zero zero. I guess and they'd have to take more test allowable test cases for that. I guess. What if we try j equals? One? Maybe that will help us out. All right, let's go ahead and run for this. No, hmm, did change anything? I guess not. But for starting at zero, we're starting at zero. Now that index zero is three, nums that index one is also three. Um, right, nums at index 0 is 3, nums at index 1 is then 3 plus 3 is 6, um, which is our target value, right? So it should be 0 and 1, right? Maybe, what if I click submit? How many test cases did we pass? This should work right, we made our thing, did this, did this, and then we're turning it right there, right? Um, uh, closing this if condition, for loop A, for loop B, um, and then, and then, yeah, that seems right. 51 of 60 test cases passed. Okay. Okay, how about this, y'all? Instead of we do, what if in j equals 1, why don't we try equals i plus 1? Yes. This will be ahead of it, our i counter. Let's try that. Yes, there we go. Now it works. Okay, yeah, I guess you can kind of see that. Alright, hit submit. Let's see how we did. There we go. So this was accepted. Okay, so we're on time, 49 milliseconds. Um, next question, I guess more challenges are available. Um, beats, we only beat 30.26% of users with the Java. Not that good, but I guess it's all right. Well, why don't we do one more thing? Why don't we do one more thing? Why don't we add a break, I guess, within the zip condition? So, for like, I don't know if it makes really a difference, but 
Um, if it doesn't meet this case, then we just break out of the loop, I guess. Because this way, right, y'all, the reason why I'm saying this is that there may be other solutions, right? But as soon as we find the first one, right, why don't we just break out of it? I don't know if it'll really make much of a difference. Um, but yeah, let me just, I think so, right? We can just break out of this because then there's no point of checking the other four loops. Once we do it, I guess, let me hit run, maybe. Run. Yeah, okay, these three test cases passed and then submit. Um, okay, there we go. Now this beats 55.30% users with Java. So, uh, yeah, I think that's it, y'all. This is my solution to this problem. The two-step problem on lead code with Java. Here is solution in just 15 lines of code. This wasn't really a hard problem or anything. But yeah, there you go. So what you got to do is, this is already their first few major um, integer. So let me go back to the description, okay. First you major integer uh, list, I call that ants with the size of two, we declared it, instantiated it. Then we made an I, then a J, which starts one after the I. Um, and then if it equals our target, then ants set index zero, we set it to I, and ants set index one, <coughs> we set it to our J value, and then we break, and then close that, and then we should return it. That's literally it, you all. Um, yeah, anything else I want to say? Let's just keep coding, keep working. Python, Java, you want to say whatever you're doing, keep on doing, keep on having fun, y'all. It's a great ride. I'm um, hoping to get back, maybe we do some more early code problems. We're still probably going to do the easy, medium ones, but yeah, this is how I would do this problem, uh, I guess. I do not write any code comments because I feel like we don't really need them, but you can add code comments if you like. No one is stopping you guys from doing what y'all love. So anyway, yeah, that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching. Thanks for sticking around. And you made it to the end of the video. Congratulations. And I will see you guys next time. Keep coding. Keep having fun. Keep doing what you're doing. And yeah, thanks for watching, y'all.